I would ask Sinesh to, to point out to us where and when did Stalin ever kill in the name of atheism. Stalin was seminary educated, by the way. In fact, he tolerated the church. He was more concerned about the political implications of the church. His atheism was more of a political thing than philosophical. And yet, uh, Christians like, like Hitler, Hitler was a Christian. He was a member of the church. And, and Dinesh is flat out wrong to include the Nazi regime along with atheism. That's just a flat out lie and misrepresentation of history. They wore go goat mitunes on their belt buckles. They, uh, they were Lutherans and they were Catholics and they were members of the church. They were not an atheistic regime. They, they were pro-Christian. In fact, Hitler even said, uh, the work that Jesus started in exterminating the Jews, I, Hitler, I'm going to finish that. He was on a religious crusade. He was a horrible Christian, just like Stalin was a horrible atheist. The atrocities committed by human beings are not because of their religious views. It's because some human beings on this end of the bell curve are moral monsters. Stalin was a horrible person. And uh, uh, it, is, it is a disservice to atheists to try to lump us uh, with somebody uh, like Hitler. Uh, that's in Mein Kampf, I think it is, yeah. No, it isn't. Where is it then? I remember uh, him saying Well, I'll that. tell you where it is, and it's actually not what you said. Uh, in the 1930s, Hitler was trying to um, win the support of the churches. Wait a minute, you're asking me a question. But you didn't know the answer. <laughs> but I know that he said that. Well, the quote, the quote does not mention Jesus. The quote is, in Hitler was trying to win the support of the churches by saying that, quote, he's doing the Lord's work. He didn't mention Jesus. And what he meant by this is he had invented a Nazi Christ who, instead of being crucified by the Jews, was a great Jew killer. Not a, not a Christ recognizable to any Christian, and no German churches bought it. So all I'm saying is it seems a, to be a quote ridiculously uh, stripped from its context. Okay, but let, let me move but on. let me answer it by saying that I think you're wrong. I read a quote where, where Hitler mentioned Jesus and the work of Jesus, and if it's not a Mein Kampf, I, I would challenge you publicly on that. There is a quote, perhaps not where I remember it was, but I didn't come prepared to talk about Hitler. You okay. raised Hitler tonight, so I don't have my notes for that. But, right. uh, but he did say that. Jesus, Hitler did say, and I'm on record, that the work that Jesus started, hi Hitler will finish. Are you familiar by, with, with the work by Richard Weikart called From Darwin to Hitler? It's a study of the effect of social Darwinism and the impact of, the, of Nietzsche. I've read um, about that, but I haven't read that. Okay. Well, you might want to widen your circle of knowledge here, because Hitler was greatly influenced by social Darwinism. In fact, the survival of the fittest is a phrase that appears repeatedly in Mein Kampf and all of Hitler's writings. Can I ask you a question now? Certainly. Was Hitler an atheist? Yes. When I Whoa. say he was... No, no. I'll, I'll, I'll defend it. Hitler was, you could call him a pagan. And but what was I mean, he, did he believe yeah. in God? No. He Hitler didn't did not believe, believe in God. God. No. Hitler revived what he called the ancient Teutonic myths. Now here's the point. In, in, the anci in ancient Germany, just as in ancient Greece, people believed that Apollo and Poseidon were real. They believed that there was a Mount Olympus where these gods lived. But it is a complete idiocy to believe that people in the 20th century, including Adolf Hitler, believed in those gods in the same way that the ancient Norsemen or Germans did. For Hitler, these were pagan ideas that were emotionally powerful that he used against Christianity. So the truth of it is, yes, he was not a theist in any ordinary sense of the term. But, but he, the Nazis had God as with them. What did that word God mean? They were, they were Catholics and they were Lutherans. And Hitler was a member of the Catholic Church. Hitler was he not was, a member of the Catholic Church. He was a member of the Catholic Church. Hitler he was, was never a member of the Catholic Church. Well, it's like what you said about Stalin. It's true, Stalin was actually raised in the Orthodox Church. But look, come on. Stalin rejected those beliefs in his childhood. He became a radical, tyrannical Marxist. And you said... He didn't do anything in the name of ideology or atheism. All you have to do is crack open the collected works of Karl Marx. It's very clear that the atheism isn't incidental. It's a central part of the communist scheme. Marx says that religion is the opiate or the opium of the masses. It blinds you to social injustice and you've got to get rid of it to create the new man and the new utopia freed from the shackles of traditional religion. So there it is. It's right in Stalin's Bible, which is to say Karl Marx. And if you want Christians to take responsibility responsibility for the bad things done in the name of Christianity, why don't you take some responsibility for the bad things done in the name of atheism? I do. I do. Let me tell you something. 
I can't apologize for Soviet communism, of course, but since Stalin was a human being, like I'm a human being, I apologize as a human being for that horrible human thing he did. He was a horrible atheist. But will you produce a quote for me where Stalin himself said, I am doing this in the name of atheism to convert people to atheists, to destroy the church. In fact, he had a concordat with the church. He, he was in favor of religious liberty. He was opposed to the political influence of the church, not the spiritual influence. And uh, please provide for me a quote where, uh, unlike for Christianity, where Hitler credited Jesus and where the Inquisition credited the, 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 the God, give me a quote from Hitler where he did it in the name of atheism for atheism, not simply just as a bad guy. Well, I'm not saying he did it as a bad guy. He was a bad guy. I think that in tracing historical influence, like what are the things that motivated Stalin? Stalin didn't write a book. He didn't write a Mein Kampf. You're not going to find a quote from Stalin. He usually spoke with the bludgeon. Uh, but it's hard to deny that Soviet communism came out of ideological Marxism through Lenin to Stalin, who was Lenin's chief deputy. Let's, let me move on, if I may, so we can cover well, some but, more but territory. But for the record, it, it is true that there is no God. So that's, I mean, it wasn't motivating them. Well, you can't the say fact that there's no God was, is just a fact of Dan, it's, people like Marx. Dan, and, but did it motivate them to commit their crimes? No, it did not. How can Dan, you be motivated if I were to, to say, If I were to say that socialism has had a bad economic impact, we're tracing the social effect of an ideology. Whether or not socialism is true is a little beside the point. So to simply to rally your supporters, the so-called rational people, by saying there's no God, we're trying to figure out if belief in God or unbelief have led to greater massacres. You make the ridiculous point, I think, that there's no difference between a guy who shoots one man and Hitler for killing six million Jews. I didn't say that. You did. You said no, that I did not. You said the number of people doesn't matter. Did I you say said, that? Uh, regarding the scope of a moral atrocity. Right. Suppose there's a, 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 your neighboring tribe has five million people in it and you completely wipe them out. Every single one, right? Then later another tribe has 10 million people. You completely wipe them out as right. In both cases you've committed the same moral atrocity. It's called genocide. You don't measure a moral atrocity by numbers. You measure it by the intention. If it had been 10 million, I would have, you would have kept going. If it had been 50 million, you would have kept going. That's the moral atrocity. You don't measure it by how many bodies. You don't stack up the bodies and say, oh, Christianity has a stack this high. I agree. Oh, and atheism has a stack this high. Therefore, we should pick the lower stack. Why does Christianity even have a stack? But Dan, the, the difference is... You mentioned, you, mentioned, you mentioned the 5 million, the 10 million, the 20 million. Do you realize all of those are done by atheists? There is no Christian crime in history that comes even close to that. The Inquisition in Spain, which lasted 350 years, according to the best scholarship on the subject, killed fewer than 2,000 people. 2,000 people over 300 years? That's six guys a year. So here we go. Compare this to the crimes of atheism. Pol Pot, 2 million. Uh, 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 Hitler, 6 million. Stalin, 25 million. According to Halliday's book on, on, on Mao, that's something like 40 million. We're talking about great differences of magnitude. And here's the point. Earlier, Dan mentioned Norway, and you could go on and mention France and Germany. But remember that Europe is still a society drenched in Christian education, Christian culture. Even Richard Dawkins said, I am culturally a Christian. If you really want to see atheism, you can't go to Christian cultures where people still say, I believe in God or spirituality, but I don't like the church. If you want real atheism, you've got to go to societies that have made a systematic effort to extirpate God, remove religious institutions, and create the truly secular society. We have a number of those experiments in the 20th century, and they are the worst experience that history has ever produced. Well, then let me ask... <clears throat> Let me ask then, are there any real atheists in this audience tonight? They are real atheists okay. coming out of a Christian culture, but they are real. They're not out committing atrocities. Just like you try to excuse, excuse the atrocious past of early Christianity for the bloodshed, especially of the Bible and the God of the Bible, whom you seem to be saying more and more is less real and more of a metaphor. Uh, and, and don't blame modern Christians for the crimes of the past. In the same way, 
uh, you don't blame atheism for Stalin, you blame an atheist. You don't blame atheism. You said that these crimes were committed by atheism. They were committed by an atheist. Yes, atheists com commit crime. But there was no atheismism behind trying to commit these. This was just a, a, a tyrannical, bloodthirsty dictator who wanted power. It wasn't because he was trying to convert people to atheism. Yes, he was. But in Christianity, no. In Christianity, the atrocities were done in order. The missions, these, these bittersweet, ugly, beautiful missions in, this, in, in California that you go up the coast were, were built by slave labor because of the Catholic Church wanting to convert. They, there was a genocide, it was a killing, it was an enslavement, it was a demeaningness, it was a robbing, it was, uh, it was a horrible act done by Christians for Christianity in order to convert to Christianity. That's a direct connection between your faith and a moral atrocity. All right. well, atheism doesn't make any claims like that. It's simply the absence of a belief. Well, first of all, if there was... <laughs> first of all, Stalin very much wanted to extirpate Orthodox Christianity from Russia. That's why he shut down the monasteries, he locked up the priests, he killed them and tortured them, and the church is only now staggeringly trying to recover in the last decade or so. Why did Stalin do that? If he didn't care, the truth is he did care. He saw religion as the enemy. He worked assiduously to get rid of it. Now, compare Dan's moral compass with the missions. The missions were established to Christianize the Indians, the genocide that Dan is talking about is largely the fact that the white man brought to America diseases to which the American Indians had no immunities. The large number of native Indians who were killed died not at the hands of the sword or being beaten on the head with a Bible. They died because they got malaria and smallpox and other illnesses. Now, is that a tragedy? Yes, but it distorts the meaning of genocide beyond all recognition to call a communicable disease. By the way, the Black Plague wiped out a third of Europe. That came from Asia. That wasn't genocide. So we've got to keep moral discrimination when we talk about history and simply to lump things together, which you don't understand very well, that's not very good history. They were enslaved. They were enslaved. They were locked up. They were worked to death. Those beautiful, loving people who lived on this land were invaded by people with guns and Bibles who thought they had a, a moral religious right and they were locked into these places, they were, lived in squalor, they were taken advantage of, they were, uh, many of them were actually beat on the head with swords and Bibles. So why are you trying to minimize, why don't you step up to the plate and apologize for Christianity like you're asking me to do for atheists? Are we out of time? My ancestors we were Hindus and okay. in India at the time. I'm so engrossed in this, I want to see if it comes to blows. Um, 